but this morning I, I have something on my heart that I hope uh, touches your heart today, maybe challenges you just a little bit. Uh, and the title of my sermon is Looking Forward to Church. Looking Forward to Church. If you have your Bible, uh, get it out. Turn to John chapter 5. I'm going to read from the ESV version here. It'll be on the screen as well. John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. Uh, it says this, After this there was a great feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, in Aramaic it's called Bethsaida, which has five roof colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? And the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred. And while I'm going, another one steps down after me or before me. So what happens here is an angel of the Lord once a day would come and stir this pool. And so all these paralyzed, blind, or lame people, they would, the first one in the pool would receive a miracle. And so this guy obviously couldn't get there and he would, the, when the water was stirred. But every time he would try, somebody would beat him there. That's terrible, right? I think I'd trip somebody. Uh, but Jesus said to him, get up. Take up your bed and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and he walked. Uh, I want to talk to you about something that I hope will challenge you this year. Uh, I believe many people, or I know many people, have already started or will start to make New Year's resolutions. Anybody out there? You're going to work out. It may last three weeks. And you're going to eat better, whatever it is. You're going to. If you're a student, you're going to treat your parents better. Hey, Amen. Uh, you're going to treat your spouse better. Whatever it is, you've made these resolutions to do something or to better your life. And I want to challenge you to make one resolution this year. Can y'all do that with me? Here it is. Are you ready? It's not real hard. It's to be in church every chance you get. Be in church every chance. Make it a purpose to be at church. Like there's nothing waking up with a purpose, right? It's one thing to wake up and have to go to work, and there's one thing to wake up and you want to go to work. It's one thing to wake up and you have to see your family. It's another thing to wake up and you want to see your family. Uh, it's purpose. It's you wake up with this energy. You might not be a morning person, uh, but you wake up and you've got a purpose. You've got a plan. You've got something to do. You've got people to see. You have purpose. And I'll never forget when I was a kid before I knew what purpose really was, I would look forward to Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. Come on now. And they don't make cartoons like they used to. I'm not real old. I'm, I'll be 40 this year. Woo! But I, they don't make them like they used to, right? Anybody out there? They have all these weird, like, electronic cartoons. What is that? It's not a cartoon. But I remember waking up and watching cartoons, and I would watch the whole uh, hour or two of whatever it was with cartoons and eating cereal, just eating bowls and bowls of cereal, and, and watching these cartoons on Saturday morning. Then one of my favorite shows would come on called Saved by the Bell. Anybody watch that? There was, like, a line. And I would watch this, and as a kid, don't judge me, uh, my wife already, I've confessed to her that Kelly was like my childhood crush on Saved by the Bell. And so I would only watch for Kelly. And uh, I would watch this, but then, as soon as Saved by the Bell was over, probably the most historic show for me growing up in West Philadelphia, born and raised, on a playground is where I spent most of my days, chilling out. Anybody know that song? Somebody knew it. Come on now. Get you a mic. Come on up here. <laughs> Fresh Prince of Bel Air came on, and I'll never forget waking up with purpose. Like, I mean, come on, cartoons and cereal? Nothing better than that. Even though we had the off brand cereal. Anybody had the off brand cereal? Like Fruity Gems? <laughs> Cocoa Drops? <laughs> you know, like, whatever that was. Fruit rounds, nobody had those? I can't even think of all of them. And I knew that everything wasn't perfect in the world, but if I look forward to Saturday morning because it made it seem like everything was perfect, I woke up with a purpose. 
And that's where this man was that we read in John 5. Something happened to him at a young age, but we don't really know what it was. It, it, it just says that he was this normal kid, and for whatever reason, he got sick, and the Bible calls him an invalid. And what's interesting about this word is that there really isn't a definition. It's not really definable. It doesn't really show exactly what is wrong with him. It just means sick. And if you look this word invalid up in the Greek, it just means sick or ill. There's no real definition to what was wrong with him. Just one day he woke up and he wasn't okay anymore. And I believe with the state of that our world has been in the last few years that some of us have woken up and we weren't okay anymore. I believe that maybe you woke up and you felt depressed about something. Maybe you woke up and you felt alone. Maybe you woke up and your marriage was a mess. Maybe you woke up and you felt as if the stress of your day was about to take you out. And just one day you became an invalid. And here's the problem. When you become an invalid, then you start to feel invalid. You have that season. Maybe you're out there and you're like, what do I do? What, what do I do? And this man had lost something. He didn't know what was wrong with him. And if we were honest in our lives, if we asked around the room and took a poll past the mic, which would be really crazy, and we asked the question, what's wrong? I think a lot of us would say, I don't know. I don't know. You ever been there in your life? You were happy, but now you feel so depressed. What's wrong? You used to love to come to church and worship, but now all you do is kind of sit there. What's wrong? I don't know. I was doing everything right. I, I was trusting God. I, I didn't do anything wrong. I was living for God, and some reason you kind of fell apart. I don't know why I feel this way. I don't, I don't know why I'm going through what I'm going through. I really can't define it, and that's exactly where this young man is. And I feel like this morning as we go into a new year, there are many people in this I don't know season, you're sort of weary, you've sort of lost hope for a, a new start. It's just another day. Maybe you won't even make any resolutions this year because you've lost hope. But I want to challenge you with this. This man is in this same place, but he decides to go to a place called Bethsaida. If you look up Bethsaida, Bethsaida actually means house of mercy. So what do I do when I'm in this I don't know what to do season, you go to the house of mercy. Well, what do I do when I, I don't feel like everything's going right and I feel like maybe I'm kind of just walking through hell? Anybody ever been there? You go to church. Well, well I just don't, don't want to go to church. Well, you go to church anyway. What do I do when I feel like I'm just tired? I, I, I don't feel like getting up. You get up anyway. What do I do when I don't feel worthy to walk into church? There's good news for you. It's not a house of justice, because if it was a house of justice, none of us could walk in here. It's a house that James writes where mercy triumphs over justice. Bethsaida is the house of mercy. It's going to church. So what do I do when I, I'm in this I don't know season? Why? What do I do when I feel like everything was going right? Now it seems like it's going wrong. You go to church. Look at somebody and say, get in church. Look back at them and say, I am. Yeah, but I've done a lot of bad stuff lately. That's why it's a house of mercy, because mercy gives you what you shouldn't get. You don't deserve it. You definitely can't earn it, but it's a house full of it. And this is why I love church. I, look, I don't come to church because I'm so good. Anybody out there? I come to church because I messed up and I need more of Jesus. And I understand that I, I can, look, I understand that I can access Jesus anywhere in my life. Did you know that you can access Jesus at your house? You can access him at your job. You can access him driving down the road. I'll be honest with you, driving down the road, singing. I don't even know how I make it sometimes. I'm going to close my eyes, sing a song. I was about to sing, but I ain't going to do it. I mess up your 2023. But <laughs> driving down the road, and, and you can access Jesus anyway. I understand that, but there's something about coming to the house of God and setting time aside to worship him and to hear his word and to be around people that want to worship and hear his word too. Look, I'm a church addict. I'm a, I admit it. I love coming to church. As a matter of fact, Hebrews 10, 25 tells us this, don't neglect meeting together. Why? Because we spur each other on or we build each other up. It's when we surround ourselves with others that pushes us toward Christ. That's what this church body, this church family does for us. 
Did you know that you're our family? Well, you don't know me. Well, I need to get to know you. Your family. Something about coming to church or something about putting time aside and being in the house of God. And here's what I love about this story. It says this man, he goes to the house of mercy. He goes to Bethsaida, and there were a great number. There were a great number. There were a lot of people there. Well, it just feels like I'm going through it. Well, welcome to the club because there's a great number. There's a great number. I feel all alone. Actually, in church, our family, you're not all alone. There's a great number. I feel like I messed, too mu- too, messed up too much to come here. It's okay because there's a great number. There's a great number. Look around. There's a great number. Sometimes, look, I just come to church and say, man, they're really messed up. Yes, I'm normal. There's nothing, look, there's nothing like talking about that thing in your life that's so messed up that you're sure you're going down, you're about to go to hell. Like, I messed up so bad. And then somebody comes up and like, me too. And you're like, high five, yes, I can make it. And it's not that we're celebrating our dysfunction, but it's good to know that we can look forward to church and there are other people that have gone through things too and they can help me get through whatever issues of life that I face. That's what we're here for. Anybody out there this morning? And so there were a great number of people around this man. They were disabled. They were blind. They were paralyzed. And I feel like some of us have been blinded. Maybe you didn't lose your eyesight. Maybe you feel a little deaf. You used to come to church and you heard the word and you, and you heard the worship and I mean, everything felt so electric and everything felt so powerful and you didn't want it to end. Have you ever been there? You didn't want the service to end. You felt so much rest. You felt the Holy Spirit around you. Uh, but now you, you feel blinded and you feel deaf and you just kind of come to check a box. You could pull your toes back a little bit. You used to look forward to Sunday. You couldn't wait to get back to church. You couldn't wait to get to church. You couldn't wait to get to the house of mercy. You become like this man and maybe you feel lame. You were running towards your destiny. You were running towards your calling and something came and took your legs right out from under you. I didn't think I would fall. I didn't think I would do that. I didn't think I would choose that path. I didn't think I would get into this rut, but there were a great number. There were a great number, and this is why we need an amazing church like we have. Amen? This is why we need to invite people to church. This is why we need to come to church, because I believe there's a great number of people in our communities that desperately need a house of mercy, that desperately need a place to come where they can see other people that struggle too, but the power of God touches their life and can work through each one of you to touch their life. And where this man was, it was a place of dysfunctional people, But miracles were taking place there. Every day a miracle was taking place. And for every dysfunction I believe that you have, there's a miracle with your name on it. I don't know about you. I I, I need a miracle in my life. You ever been in a place where you need a miracle? Well, how do I receive my miracle? You stay where miracles are happening. You get around people where miracles are happening. You look forward to coming to church. You wake up on Sunday morning with a purpose and a joy knowing that you get to go to church. It's a privilege for you. It's purpose for you. You get in the house of mercy. And when you get into church, when you get into the house of God, you can find strength for your life. You can find rest. You can find hope. And it restores your soul. See, we want this place to be a place that no matter where you've been or where, what you've done or what you've been through, that anyone can come and they can feel love. They can feel the presence of God. I'm going to tell you right now, there's nothing better than feeling the presence of God around your life. There's nothing better than feeling the Holy Spirit touch your soul. We want this place to be a place for everyone that they can feel the presence of God, that they could be surrounded by a great number of people that they could feel love, that they could feel purpose, that they could reignite a passion inside of them to be in the house of God, to have an experience and to receive a miracle that they're looking for. See, we've got to rejoice for the church. We've got to be excited for the church. We've got to be thankful for the church because it's a place full of dysfunctional people that Jesus makes function. And when we come together knowing that we aren't 
the only one dealing with the weakness, that we aren't the only one that feels alone, we realize that we can look forward to coming to church just like this man in the story. And then Jesus walks up and he says, take up your bed and walk. And I believe that miracles can happen anywhere. But I believe that when we come together and we worship, that worship is the breeding ground for miracles. That when we begin to exalt and lift up the name of Jesus, that we don't have to have people come up here and, and, and do crazy stuff to you. And I know George makes jokes about pulling out snakes. That'd be crazy. Weird. I wouldn't be here. But <laughs> neither would you. Some of you might be. Shane probably would, but I wouldn't be. I love you. He's sweating right now. He's going to punch me later, so pray for me. But I believe this is a place where when you begin to worship and you allow the power of the Holy Spirit to touch lives, that miracles can take place right where you're sitting. That the Holy Spirit can infiltrate any soul, any heart, any life, and their life can be changed in just a moment. And we rejoice for the church. I know this isn't some crazy deep sermon, but my challenging, my challenging spirit is challenging you to be in church at every moment you get. Look, we love the online. Everybody, anybody in here ever watch online? Yeah. Online is great. It's a great tool. It's a great opportunity for us to reach so many people all across this uh, world. And, and, and I believe that it's, it's, it's great. That's all I can say about it. But what it's made for are people that can't get here physically or they live far off. You're going to hate me for this, but I love you. It's not made for those that want to be lazy. Ugh. Pastor George will be back next week. <laughs> I may be on probation for a month. Seriously. There's no exchange for sitting together in church service, experiencing the power of God, in person. It's almost like going and watching a commercial on going on a cruise. Anybody ever been on a cruise? I've talked about this about three times in sermons. I'm, somebody needs to buy me a cruise. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't do it. It's like watching co a commercial and it's dreamy and it's like, oh my God, that'd be amazing. That'd be fun. But then there's a difference when you actually book one and you pack and you get on that ship and you experience it firsthand. And that's how church is. You could watch online, and I, I believe God can work through our online service just like he can work here, but there's something different about getting up, getting dressed, getting your kids up, even though you're like, ah, and you need the power of God now, or else they're going to see something else. They're going to meet Jesus real quick. <laughs> and my dad told me one time when, we were, when I was little, I'm squirreling, is that okay? Uh, when I was young and we were growing up, my dad and my mom, they, they were in church. They were actually the children's directors. And I remember I told him one day, I got a little older, I was like, I'm not going to church today. And he was like, boy, you better get up. I was like, I ain't. He said, you got one of two options, bud. He said, you can get up and go to church or I can kill you and we'll have your funeral at church. Either way, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm like, all right. So I'd have been in church either way, but, but there's nothing like experiencing the presence of God with other believers and watching God work firsthand in your life. If you're sick, if you live far off, or you're not capable of coming, we understand, and that's what that is set up for. But we want you to be here. We want to get to be able to talk to you and look you in the eye and, and build relationships with you and become a family together. There are some people that I know that come and they go and they feel, don't feel connected and a lot of times it's on us, but a lot of times it's on them. And if you don't feel connected, there's so many opportunities and avenues to, to, to get you connected. And sometimes we have to look at ourselves and don't go off and say, well, that church wasn't very nice. I feel like we have a nice church. Any nice people out there? This section wasn't very nice. Preaching to you. 
And there's something about getting here and you walk up and people are greeting you in the parking lot and people are opening doors for you and it changes your atmosphere. It changes your attitude. It changes your presence. You could be on the way to church choking a kid, but when you come in and be like, go learn about Jesus, Johnny. <laughs> it changes you. It sets the tone for your day. It sets the tone for your week. There's something about coming to the house of mercy. There's something about coming to the house of God and experiencing who he is firsthand. It's what we're made to do. The Bible, I talked about it in Hebrews, tells us don't neglect meeting with each other. It actually says like some people do. It's talking about the religious people. Don't get so religious that you think, well, I don't need church. You know what frustrates me the most? When people say, I have a relationship with God, I don't need to go to church. <laughs> I chuckle at that. Can you have a relationship with God? Does church save you? No. But I believe church can keep you saved. Because you build different relationships. You surround yourself with people that want the same thing as you. You get fed the word of God. You get this passion. When the Word of God hits you, I believe when the Word of God hits your soul and hits your heart, it causes this passion to arise that you want more, which causes you to go home and read your Bible. Don't raise your hand. How many people would say in your own heart that sometimes you're like, man, I want to know more about that, and you go home and read your Bible? I said, don't raise your hand because I was afraid only three people would. <laughs> but you should. It should cause this passion to rise up in you that you go home and build this relationship with God for yourself church is important for your life church does not save you Jesus is the only one that saves it's like you're not a taco if you go to Taco Bell right you can get a taco but you can't get a taco unless you go to Taco Bell right there's a reason the church was set up for believers so that you could worship him and you set time aside on purpose and you wake up in the morning you look forward to church because you know it's a refreshing for your spirit it's a refreshing for your soul and you get to build these relationships that last forever that can carry you through your life and if you're not doing that i encourage you to do that find someone that you can relate with find someone that you can build a relationship with find someone that you could talk about the goodness of God with find someone that you can pray with find someone that that you can believe with find someone that you can do life with that's sitting on the pews that are next to you today because the church is set up to be a family it's the body of Christ and we need every single person you're all important and we want you to be here so that God can change your life little by little by little by little and iron sharpens iron and iron sharpens iron and you build these relationships and before you know it we don't have two services or three services or four services George is going to punch me for this but we're going to build a new building amen I said it I'm probably getting fired but it's a place full of dysfunctional people that Jesus makes function you don't have to be alone in your dysfunction because this is a place for the weak. And we want this place to not just be a crutch. Look, I need way more than a crutch. This is a place or a stretcher for the dead in spirit. This is a place where people that they can't live without, they're dead without Jesus. And they come and they can experience the power of God. There are people that walk in here every week that have never walked into a church before. And lives are being changed. Do you believe that? And I would love nothing more because I know that, I don't want to bring up the past, but through COVID years and, and through the, the tough economy and all that, and, and people are struggling and they've got out of this rhythm, they've got out of this desire, their, their purpose for church has been lost. And things have become a crutch to them. Some people have come just to, hey, this is what we do, we got to go to church, but it's more than that. And my hope and my passion is that you would all feel this desire to be here, that it would be electric to you again, that when you walked in, you would feel the Holy Spirit, that it's more than just a cool band singing great songs and, and their talent is off the level. It's more than that. It's more than just Pastor George preaching a great sermon. It's more than all that. 
It's that you get to come and you get to set time aside with other people and worship the King of Kings. On purpose, with a purpose. And my prayer for you is that it's exciting for you again. Anybody excited for church? Look, I need a house of mercy to come and find him because I'm dead without him. I need a house of mercy. And I believe that there are so many reasons why we come to church, but this is the one I'm talking about today. It's something about waking up and wanting to go to church. Something about waking up and getting to go to church. Let all distractions be put aside, that we put God back, number one, with his rightful spot. Right? His rightful spot. Something about setting this time aside with other believers and gathering and worshiping God. And I believe that lives are going to be changed this year. I know we get up here and talk about, Bryce said it, we say it every year, it's going to be the greatest year yet. It's not cliche. It's that we're prophesying, we're hoping, and we're believing that this is Turning Point's greatest year. And guess what? You're part of this family. So it's going to be your greatest year. And guess what? In 2024, we're going to say it again. Because we really believe and hope for that. We really want that. We really are pushing toward that. And I believe that it starts with putting aside and making a commitment to be, on, to be at church on purpose. On purpose. And so if you're here this morning, I commend you. You made it. The first Sunday of 2023. And there's nothing like starting your year off in church celebrating and worshiping the King of Kings. There's nothing like it. And if you're in this room, I want to challenge you today. I don't want you to ever feel too broken or too messed up to walk into Turning Point. Don't you ever feel less than. See, our society rejects broken things. And I believe that this is why many people never walk into a church because if people rejected them, their mindset is, Jesus is going to reject me too. But you know something great? Jesus loves the dirty, stained up things, and he likes to wash them white as snow. He loves to take the broken heart and mend them back together because this is the house of mercy. This is the church that, that is a, a, an emergency room for people to walk in and experience healing in their life. And so if you ever feel too broken, if you ever too, feel too messed up, just know that at Turning Point, I can't speak for any other church. I hope that they do. I believe that they do. But for sure here, you're never too far gone. You're never too messed up. That we want you here. And we don't want you here to be like, oh, we have a thousand people. No, we want you here so that God can change your life at the very beginning of your week. And your day and your week and your year could be set on the house of God. So my challenge for you is if, if you've lost that passion as the band comes, you've lost that desire to come to church, maybe it's not as electric as it used to be to you, maybe you've kind of lost some of that passion, is that you would look forward, that you would start to look forward to church again, that you would ask God to allow that desire and that fire and that passion to come back again. Uh, maybe, maybe you don't come at all and you're watching online and you come across this on our YouTube channel or whatever it is that we post this on, and you come across this message, my challenge for you is to make a purpose, on purpose, get up and to come to church. You might not have been here, but you say you're a part of our family. Hey, make it a purpose to come. We want to meet you. We want you to experience our service so that God can touch your life. Maybe you're here every time the doors open and and you've started to kind of go through the motions and check the boxes and you did what you're supposed to do. But my challenge for you is to allow the excitement that you used to have to be restored in your life. Or maybe you're here and you look forward to church every week. Maybe you're here and you have that passion and you're excited and, and you can't wait to be here and you don't want it to end. And when it ends, you're like, man, I can't wait for next Sunday. I commend you for that. But my challenge for you is to show that same passion and that same excitement and that same desire to others through serving in the house of mercy. I know we talk about it a lot, but there's nothing like allowing God to work through you to touch another life. And so if you're excited to be here, you can't wait, and you're refreshed and you're ready to go, you, you're ahead of everybody in 2023, you just can't wait. 
hey, serve the house of mercy. Serve in the house of God. Allow God to work through you to watch other lives change. My prayer is that this year would be a year that people would come back to the start and they would put God in his rightful place and they would start their day, their week, and their year off in the house of God. That they come back to longing to be in the house of mercy. Amen? Amen. Can we pray this morning? If you just stand on your feet, we're going to pray and then we're going to have another worship song. You know, part of that is, and we've talked about this too, is that we like to start and end with worship because that's how the Lord's prayer is set up. And my challenge, I know I made a joke, we're going to have a new tripping ministry. And if you walk out early, look, your kids are going to be okay. We have a wonderful kids program. I mean, we want you to experience and end with lifting the name of Jesus up and worshiping. So I, I challenge you this year, hey, unless it's an emergency or you really got to go, hey, try to stay in, in, in this thing with worship. It's not so that our band can practice another song, but it's for you that you get the opportunity to end the service. You just heard the word. It's landed up. Your heart is open from worship earlier. You heard the word. Now seal it with some worship. Can y'all do that? All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity just to be in your house. Lord, we just thank you for the church. We thank you for establishing the church for us believers and for those that don't believe that can come in and experience who you are and they can receive salvation, they can receive a miracle, a healing, whatever it is that they need. Father, I pray that this year, 2023, that we would come back to the beginning, Lord God, that we would put you first, that we would have this passion and desire to be in your house every chance we get, that we couldn't wait for the doors to open to come in and to worship you. Lord, I ask that you would empower every single person in here, that you would challenge them in their spirit to set time aside for you, that they would start their week off at church, that they would start their week off building relationships with people in this church. Lord God, and your power would show up in their lives throughout the rest of the week. Lord, I just pray for every single person in this room today that their 2023 would be the best year that they've ever had, Lord God. Whatever it is that they're seeking, whatever it is that they're pressing forward to, whatever their desires of their heart is, Father, I pray that you would begin to, to, to lead them and to guide them into those areas. Father, I pray that they would receive more uh, of your spirit, that they receive more of your power, that they would get closer to you than they've ever been. And I know that when they do that, everything else will fall into place according to your will. But I just pray that this year for Turning Point, would be our greatest year, that we would see more lives come to know you. Lord, not for our glory, but for your glory. That more people would receive you as their Savior than we've ever seen before. More baptisms would take place than we've ever seen before. Lord God, so that lives could change, so that revival could truly take place in our communities. Father, thank you for the house of mercy. Thank you for the church. In the name of Jesus, amen.